Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Laura Davidson. I'm a partner here at Forling. Today, we're going to uh, be going over Fixed Asset Manager for QuickBooks Enterprise. We are going to start off by a quick introduction to the Fixed Asset Manager. We're going to look at some key features. I'm going to go through how to set up assets actually on the QuickBooks desktop side and in the Fixed Asset Manager. We're going to take a look at tracking the depreciation and then we're going to look at some reports. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into product here. Now, Fixed Asset Manager is a module for QuickBooks. It's for tracking, managing, and depreciating fixed assets. It helps businesses calculate their depreciation and track the statuses of your assets over time. It's a pretty seamless integration. Uh, it sits right here. So if you go to Company, Manage Fixed Assets, mine's sitting right here. So I'll pull that up. Now, um, this makes it a lot simpler than tracking your assets inside of Excel. Uh, with Excel, you have to go through, make sure your depreciation is right, your accumulated depreciation is right, and then go and calculate what it would be for your journal entry to get it into your financial software. This is going to do it all for us. It's going to track those not only acquisitions, but we can actually track disposals as well. And you're going to know you're always in compliance because this will keep us up to date. So when we first go in here, um, it's going to ask you some different things for setup. So first, when we go in, it's going to pull this little box up. Now, this is a sample QuickBooks file that I'm using. So it is pulling in the company name and address from that sample file. I did go ahead and se select some dates. I selected the current year. Now, the basis and the methods, I'd recommend you getting with your accountant or your CPA to find out how best to track these. Federal is always going to be selected. It's always grayed out here because that's one of the, the methods that we have to use. So we will keep federal listed here. Now, um, there's also adjusted current earnings. There is alternative minimum tax. And we're not going to do those today. Uh, we're just going to do book. Um, but you can also do state. So if you're going to do state tax, or you can do other. So if you're going to do local, county, that kind of thing, you can choose this as well. For methods, normally the federal is going to be on a 200 declining balance. There's also um, several others in here that you can choose from. For book, we're going to go with straight line. Okay. Now, groupings, uh, I threw these in here earlier today. So these would be my categories. So different categories for assets. I've got my computer equipment, furniture and fixtures, vehicles. We can do some different reporting down the road with that. Also, some other groupings. We can do amortization. We can do it by vendor. We can use location, et cetera. The accounts, these are just your GL accounts that sync over from QuickBooks. So these are actually going to match what's in your QuickBooks financial file. So I'm going to say OK here. Couple other settings. So up here, there's some asset synchronization questions. So you can you can shut this off and you can just have it where you manually update your assets going both directions. Um, I have this set up to automatically do it for both, both new assets I put in and if I modify a fixed asset. So it's going to do it if I do it on the QuickBooks side or if I do it on the fixed manager side. I'm going to say OK to that. Um, so let's jump in and take a look here at setting up some fixed assets. I'm going to start off here on the QuickBooks desktop side. And we're going to go here under lists and our fixed asset item list. Now here I'm just going to right click and I'm going to add a new one. So let's see, let's start off with adding a 2024 Ram truck. Okay. I have to pick out an asset account. So this is going to be where my asset sits on my balance sheet. So I'm going to choose my automobiles and trucks. Now I also have to put in here um, 
a description. So I'm just going to put a new Ram truck. Actually, you know what? Let's do that and let's put 2024 here. Now here I can pick the date that I purchased. So let's do this as of February 1st, 2024. Uh, let's say we paid 85,000. Now you can add in the vendor you bought it from, uh, this side for sales information, this is if you're disposing of your asset. You can put in your asset description, you can do a location, et cetera. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Uh, let's also do, let's see, let's do, um, let's do a Dell laptop. So I'm gonna put that to computer and office. I'm just going to call this Laura's Dell laptop. And let's say we got that June 15th of 24 for $2,500. I'm going to go ahead and save that one. Now, before I forget, uh, let's jump in and go take a look at how to set this up on your balance sheet. So let's start with the Ram truck. I'm going to go write a check for February 1st. Um, let's just do a new vendor here. Let's do new vendor and I'm going to do Ram, do Ram, oops, truck sale. Okay. That. Uh, now I didn't pay the full 85,000, uh, put down 15,000 for down deposit. Uh, let's do that truck. And here, since I already have my asset in, I can just pick out my fixed asset. It brings in the amount for me. And over on this side, I'm actually gonna put the balance to auto loan. In fact, you know what, let's do, let's see, this is 2460, let's do a sub account here. Let's do a loan, let's do 2465. I'm gonna say, um, let's do Ram truck purchase, Ram truck. And I'm gonna make this a sub account of auto loan. Now you can also, uh, that one must not be a loan account. Okay. What is this one? Long-term liability. Okay. So let's, should be able to do, let's try this again. I should be able to do a new, let's do long-term liability, 2465. And we're going to do, I'm going to just put RAM loan. A lot of times you can put uh, the different bank that you're using for the loan, but I'm going to go ahead and set up this way because I'm, I'm going to do another truck here and I just want to be able to differentiate the two. So let's go ahead. I'm going to save a new and let's go ahead and do the laptop too. So the laptop was purchased June 15th at 24. And let's get that from Blackwell's office supply, 2,500. And let's just delete that line out. I'm going to actually do the Dell laptop here. I brought my 2,500 in, so this is paid for. I got both of those. Let's go take a quick look at our balance sheet. So our balance sheet now shows we've got automobiles and trucks for 85,000. We've got a computer and office equipment for 2,500. And down here, it actually has my RAM loan for 70,000. Okay, so let's go take a look at the fixed asset manager side. So it is syncing my assets over. All right, it gives me a little update. So I get a little synchronization log. Everything was successful. So here it shows me my cost, 
for both. It already has a little bit of information in here, but it doesn't know how I want this done. So let's double click here. We're gonna go in and get this set up correctly. So here it brings in my asset description. It does say this was a new purchase, but down here I'm missing a couple of things. So it did bring my asset account, but I need to connect this also to my accumulated depreciation. And I need to put this to my depreciation expense because when we go in and do our journal entry, we want this to hit all the right accounts. Now here, this is where you can do your different groupings. So here I can actually put this to my vehicles. Down here, this is where it records everything for the purchase and for depreciation. So this is my federal side. This is my book side. So it brought over my tax system of makers. It did my depreciation methods that I set up when I set up the fixed asset manager. It automatically is bringing in five years here. You can choose just, um, let's do this, let's do seven years for this one so you can see the difference. Here it does give you different conventions that you can use. So let's do mid, mm, let's do mid quarter on this one. There are some other options, so you can do a section 179. That's where you take the entire amount as a depreciation for the current year of when you purchased. There's also a couple of different bonuses here that you can do. Um, so again, you'll have to check with your CPA or the IRS uh, code for that. Now down here, this is where it shows me based on what I selected up here, it's giving me my current depreciation. Now next year, we'll be able to see accumulated depreciation will, will change because we'll have another year that will be accumulating here. Let's go ahead and save this one. And I'm going to go back and let's do the Dell laptop. So here um, we've got straight line, five years. Let's go ahead here. We're going to do, let's do mid month here. I'm not going to select the bonus here. You can see it does the different depreciation based on what I selected. And don't forget to do your GL account. So accumulate depreciation and my depreciation expense. I'm going to save that. So now we have this all set up, ready to go. Um, also, I want to show you before we go too much further is you can have disposals too, okay? Um, so you can come in here and actually sell an item. So with this one, I'm going to mark this one that we are disposing of this. And let's say we sold this. Let's do yesterday. We sold this yesterday and um, we sold this for $21.50. Okay. So now here it's going to show you on the federal side, because we didn't do any depreciation on this side, was for a gain of or a loss, sorry, of $350. On the book side, it actually did already do current depreciation of 166.67. So it added that in, and so we had a little bit less of a loss. We had the $183. So I can save that, and you can see these will update over here. I can actually look at the book. I can look at the federal here too as tabs. You can also sort assets by asset number. Asset numbers, you, you don't assign yourself, those are assigned for you. Um, there's some different things you can look at for projection. Um, so as you're looking out for years, you can see how the depreciation will go for future. Uh, notes, these are just some, some different notes that you can take. Calendar, um, this just shows you, I think there's one here, um, just shows you when something was purchased. Okay, so let's go ahead 
I'm going to go ahead and um, do one more thing here. So when, when we go in, I can actually um, add an asset on both sides. So we just added them on our desktop side. So let's add one over here. So I can go in and add. This time, let's do a 2022 Toyota Tundra. And let's go ahead and do our asset, our accumulated depreciation, depreciation expense. And let's say we bought this July 20th. Let's do, this was $17,000 we bought this for. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this the same. So this gives us our current depreciation. I'm gonna save this. I'm not gonna add another one, but what I can do is I can go over to schedule. With that, I can click on this and I can go ahead and save assets to QuickBooks. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it quick because I wanna make sure it goes over. Okay, successful. And then let's go take a look over here. So if I come over here, you can see my Toyota Tundra came over. So um, one more thing, let's not forget, let's go in and post or purchase. So on July 20th, go ahead and write a check. Do July 20th, and we're gonna do our Ram truck sales. And it's not gonna be for this one, we're actually gonna do our Tundra. You know what, let me just clear this here. Let's do it, it memorized my previous one. So let me take these lines out. There we go. So we're gonna do this. I'm going to do my 2022 Tundra. That brings in my 17,000. And let's change this and let's do my Tundra. Um, I only paid 5,000 for this. I do want to record a loan. So again, let's add in another long-term liability. And let's call this uh, Tundra Loan. And I forgot what our numbers were. I think it was 22, maybe 46. Let's do this and see what we got. 24.65. Okay, so let's do this as 24.70. And we're gonna put this under auto loan. Very good, so we've got our 17,000. We've got our 5,000 down. 12,000 for a loan, let's go ahead and save. So now when I go to my balance sheet, you can see I've got my Tundra loan and my Ram loan. My asset for my vehicles increased by the 17,000. That's recording well. Let's go back over here now to our fixed asset manager and let's look at recording depreciation back to QuickBooks. You're going to go back to QuickBooks at the top, and we want to post entry to QuickBooks. Now, normally this is easier to set up um, when you haven't already posted assets and depreciation inside of QuickBooks, because what it's going to do, you have to have it balanced. So if you already have something <clears throat> inside <clears throat> of your QuickBooks financial, then you're going to have to have it the same in your fixed asset manager. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this, you can choose whether you want to post to your federal basis or to your book. This gives me a little warning just for consistency purposes. But I just want you to see what that looks like. <clears throat> so we are off a little bit here. So I'd have to take a look inside my QuickBooks file to see. So let's say, um, I'm gonna show my assets here. So we've got depreciation. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this. 
I'm going to make this match. I'm going to say I went in and I reviewed and I know that this is correct. I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to post my entry back to QuickBooks. It says it's been posted to QuickBooks. I can show the results here. So it tells me what time, it, I did it for the book basis, what date, and the amount. I'm going to say OK. So let's go back over to the QuickBooks side. Sure enough, you can see here, posted my accumulated depreciation. Go take a look. Here's my journal entry. Depreciation expense of 97.41 and accumulated depreciation looks good. So that went in well. Now, um, you can pick when you go in and actually do um, the posting of this, you can actually pick the date you want to do. We can set this up for the interval that we want to do. So if we want to have this done monthly, we can have it done monthly. Um, you can set it up where it just does it at your end, but you're going to make that decision and decide that. For accurate financials, you probably want to do it monthly. Um, so now let's go look at some different reports. So up here, I can go and go to my report display. A lot of different reports. You can even choose different types. Like I said, you could look at categories if you want to. Um, right now, I'm going to go look at <clears throat> the different schedules. So what I want to do is I'm going to look at it by GL account. Uh, now, you can look at this by your different basis. So if I was to go in and look at this on a federal basis, here's what it shows me. I've got my two trucks, my current depreciation. For federal, remember I didn't have depreciation for my laptop because I sold it. So it lists here that I sold that. I can close this out. Let's go back in. Let's take a look at what it would look like on book value. Let's do this. Okay. All right. So we've got the Ram truck, 10,625. I've got my Toyota Tundra, 153279. And it shows me the current depreciation I had on my laptop. And it also shows me the sale. Okay. Other reports, uh, like I said, if you wanted to do it by category, let's go take a quick look at that. So here's my different category reports. So I can see lead scheduled. Okay. That's what that looks like. If I go in, I'm going to do one more, and then we're going to go jump over to QuickBooks Desktop real quick. So I can also do projection. Let's say, if this will let me do add a couple years here. So here it's projecting out. So I've got uh, my current, your 2025, 26, 27, etc. That gives me my projections. Okay. Uh, other things in here, you can delete an, an asset. Um, you can search. Sometimes you might have hundreds of assets in here, so you can search quickly. Um, there is a way where we go in and prepare for next year. So after you're all done with um, filling everything up for the year, all of your depreciations posted, everything looks good. We're actually going to close it out and save it, and we're going to open it up for the new year. Um, when you get to that point, we can definitely help you with that. Now let's go back over to desktop. So again, everything's sitting here in your, in your fixed asset list, but you can also come over here and look at fixed asset listing inside of QuickBooks. What's kind of cool about this, it, it does list out all of my assets, but I can actually customize this too, because down here towards the bottom, um, there's some information here about my fixed asset. So I can choose these. I think I've already got costs. I'm gonna take this one off, say okay. So now, 
it shows me all three of my assets, my purchase date, my descriptions, my GL account it's going to for my asset. It gives me a little bit more information because I've got my cost basis, my accumulated depreciation, book value, and my sales date. So it gives you a little bit more there. And that is pretty much how you would use Fixed Asset Manager. Um, any questions, uh, please, uh, please let me know, and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, really enjoyed showing you how to uh, use Fixed Asset Manager today, and um, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much.